All right, all right. Hello, everyone, and now welcome to a game. And this game is going to be between Infi versus Colorful. This game taking place here on Terranus Stand. And I just realized that it is Infi is actually Night Elf um, as well. So hold on. Let me double check the races for you. Infi is going to be... All right, the name with the exclamation mark. So I believe this is... In, or which one's Infi? Can I really tell? Oh, I cannot really easily tell because I can't see who I am playing as and I can't see their units. Oh, this is absolutely wonderful. All right, so Infi versus Colorful. Um, difficult to tell their races and I don't know who is who, but thank you for tuning in anyways. I'm also live streaming, but for some reason it's not actually showing up. I don't know if Twitch is down or something of that nature. So let's go ahead and break things down. Let's just call these players red versus blue now here on a Terranist stand as things are getting up and underway. I did try to fix the hit points bars, so they should look a little bit better as it is going to be a keeper of the grove going up against. Them. I thought I saw a priestess of the moon for a second. Okay, I did see a priestess of the moon for a second. This was a keeper of the grove, then switched to a priestess of the moon. Meanwhile, back across over here, well, we can still hear them playing around with that rally point and, well, making it very difficult to listen to. Anyways, let's go ahead and break things down in this particular 1v1 match. I'm still not quite sure why there are some patch issues in terms of the replays. Um, but then again, when there are a lot of patches, things just generally break a little bit more um, in terms of replays until things really start to stabilize. All right, we're looking at 19 over 19 over 20 supply for both sides as we're going to be looking at a priestess of the moon making her way out here in just a moment. Meanwhile, a lone archer right here. Is it going to try and get that lightning shield? Yes, it is. And now going to go ahead and dive on into this position right here. Perhaps should be moving back just a little bit further so that it could actually deal damage to these rogues as well. There you go, going after those units. That lightning shield is eating through some of those units, but they are a little bit more spread apart than he would like as that well archer is going to finish off the rest of these remaining wizards here scroll of the beast will get picked up it is going to be true shot aura in addition to gauntlets of ogre strength plus three so much bonus damage and part of me just wants to believe that infi is red just because well it makes or infi is blue here just because that makes uh, quite a bit of sense um, because, well, there is an off-the-wall strategy, and Infi is known for these crazy strategies that sometimes do and do not work. How come I can't click here to change positioning? All right, things just are not working. It's all right. Demon Hunter now going to be coming across into the center portion of the map. He is going to go ahead and try and clear out this rogue wizard. It will get taken down. Claws of attack plus six have been picked up. Meanwhile, Priestess of the Moon going to go ahead and pick up a ring of protection plus three. Nice additional armor right there. As you're going to see, well, 15% damage reduction units are now already making their way back. And this is actually a little bit of a question that I have. And because of the way armor works versus evasion um talisman of evasion is now just significantly worse than um well i'll have to do the numbers again but it could be worse than the ring of protection plus four which drops alongside it of, car of course we're talking about overall effective hit points um i do know in certain instances you know evasion you could just proc it indefinitely and that would of course be better as the demon hunter comes back across here all right a little bit of searing arrow action there demon hunter gonna be forced to take a lot of damage already down to 367 hit points as the units are now looking to back up again back across over here archers and forest troll shadow priest they do not want to stick around far too long as we're going to take a look at this bonus plus three damage from that true shot aura and how much damage that can really deal as the priestess of the moon is just able to outrun and shoot down that forest troll shadow priest one or two more shots should do it there it goes back off to the north archers for Shoal shadow priest should be able to finish off this sasquatch here meanwhile demon hunter coming back in for more harassment but making it very difficult for the demon hunter since he has to go the long way around consistently archers lining up and making a very good wall making it very difficult for that demon hunter to escape back out as you're going to take a look wisp are now going to make their way back again all right low hit point wisp does actually get taken down we are now looking at well 
cloak of shadows not cloak of shadows just a wall right there double archers as the demon hunter is going to go ahead and staff up teleportation out of that hairy situation back across here double those two archers are just going to be sitting there for a little while longer before he realizes that the demon hunter is not there meanwhile back on the other side of the map demon hunter is clearing up the remainder of this forest troll berserker creep camp it looks like both sides will be going into tier two forest troll shadow priest now is, i'm gonna get taken down there you go there is the priestess of the moon alongside a naga sea witch priestess of the moon already at true shot or a level two giving a strong 20 percent damage bonus to all of those units now once we get improved bows um, well that damage should be getting even higher and further there you are improved bows for um, uh, hit, uh, upgrading that damage now already is 16 or currently 16 at 16 to 18 We'll see what it gets up to. Is it done? Okay, where was it? 16 to 18. All right, now adding plus three. I thought we saw improved bows. Is it improved range? Yes, 700 range right there. All right, Demon Hunter now trying to back away once more. Staff of Teleportation still on cooldown. Meanwhile, Goblin Tinker in the center portion of the map. So far, every single hero has been different in this Night Elf mirror match. All right, um, so red is actually, uh, this is actually going to be um, Infi down across here. So um, Infi is actually red here. Meanwhile, Colorful is blue, and Colorful is actually the one with the crazy strategy with this Priestess of the Moon. Lightning Shield has been brought into play. We'll see what's going to be coming of this as both sides are setting up expansions. Goblin Tinker as that third, or as that second hero, as I mentioned earlier. Demon Hunter making its way down. Meanwhile, back down to the south side here, Goblin Tinker going to take down the Sasquatch Creep Cramp. And, well, a whole lot to talk about, but very difficult to try and really predict what is going to be happening in here. Demon Hunter Goblin Tinker in a Night Elf mirror match doesn't happen very often, but then again, either does Priestess of the Moon Naga Sea Witch. That is a lot of range damage, and we are also looking at an Ancient of Wind going into not Hippogriffs, but Druids of the Talon. Now, if that continues to go even further with the Tech to Tree of Ages, we could see Cyclone in addition to Fairy Fire, and then we may even also see the addition of the Alchemist. With that much bonus damage from the True Shot Aura on the Priestess of the Moon, coupled with the negative armor of the stat, um, the negative armor of well there's that staff of teleportation of the fairy fire and maybe also the acid bomb that damage adds up so so quickly as the archers now making their way down so far we still don't see any upgrades whatsoever druids of the talent have not been added in either meanwhile coming back across here we are looking at a potential creep jack all right, Creepjack right there. Let's take a look at this. A lot of damage coming through. It looks like Dryad's going to get taken down, trying to focus down those units. There's a Fork Lightning trying to finish off even more as you're going to see another unit getting taken down there. Another Forest Troll Berserker down. A beautiful scroll of healing being used as the Druid of the Talon purposely is backing up. All right, trying to go after the remaining units. Tome of Agility picked up by this Priestess of the Moon and now going to finish off the remainder of the Creep Camps as the Priestess of the Moon is now just shy of level 4. Level 2 Searing Arrows coupled with the True Shot Aura. Naga Sea Witch also with very effective, um, well, per shot damage. We could even perhaps see the Dark Ranger as the third hero as the Black Arrows effect. And all of those three heroes just really counter the Demon Hunter. Demon Hunter really, um, really likes to focus and go after casters who need a lot of mana in order to effectively cast their spells. Oh, there is a Fairy Fire right there. Uh, extra experience coming across on the other side. Demon Hunter now coming back across here. Let's take a look. Archers are going to try to get into position here. Book of the Dead is here. You can see an easy damage. Fork Lightning as the Druid of the Clock quickly gets taken down. All right. Naga Sea Witch now being forced to back up again. All right. Book of the Dead for a potential surround and the demon hunter could be in trouble trying to run away archer trying to swing back as well as we're now going to see a transition and focus onto the goblin tinker um, we can see the potion of lesser invulnerability or invulnerability was already right there and now the cold arrow is going after that tinker tinker down to 145 hit points is it going to be able to get away yes it will meanwhile the remaining book of the dead units are trying to go after some of those archers demon hunter decides to back away doesn't want to get spotted staff of teleportation spots there is a lone archer right 
right there as well as the archer not going to be able to catch up and um, with the remainder of the group unless it pick, picks up a ride it does not look like that will be happening demon hunter has went back home goblin tinker sitting at level two demon hunter sitting at level three double claws of attack plus uh, or double claws of attack one at nine one at six add in an orb of venom as well and double slippers of agility and that demon hunter is dealing a minimum of 53 damage per attack before you even add in the damage over time from that orb of venom that damage over time is just going to be that much stronger as we're going to take a look dryad's not going to catch his opponent off guard vampiric aura not the item that the priestess of the moon was looking for but still could do a large amount of damage there as units are now trying to head back every which way all right demon hunter gets up to level four keeper of the grove now out onto the field and that's going to go ahead and try and shut down his opponent temporarily keeper of the grove cannot go toe to toe with that demon hunter especially with those claws of attack plus six as the units are going to try and engage there all right rejuvenation not going to be enough for that dryad skeletal minions are going to get taken down once more giving level four to that goblin tinker all right units trying to win back this fight here units are going to be shifting back 46 supply compared to 37 now as we are looking at well infi with the supply advantage 46 compared to colorful's 37 well who has the hero advantage though keeper the grove is at level one tinker is at level three and well we're going to be taking a look at the priestess of the moon who is well really caught in a bad spot able to use a scroll of town portal to get out of a dicey situation just in time it does need to get some rejuvenation though uh, well we'll need to drink some more moonwell juice and perhaps be able to get back into this game keeper of the grove with the orb of venom selling some um, items once more orb of venom on the keeper of the grove all three of the auto attacks having a bonus effect either damage over time slow or additional bonus damage for that priestess of the moon as she makes her way down demon hunter going after this creep camp here 60 supply compared to 46 infi has a big big lead now going into the mid game and with a big lead going now into the mid game we'll see what the follow-up plays are going to be all right uh bear is now making their way back around and i just realized i have an 180 second delay on my stream because i was casting um some events earlier and that is the reason why um well i can't really catch anyone or really interact with my stream right now all right a little bit of bad news there um so my apologies i will try and fix that as we're looking at the druids of the claw cleaning things up here demon hunter gonna go ahead and pick up pick that up priestess of the moon already here ready to go demon hunter gonna go ahead and get a mana burn off onto that keeper of the grove however cyclone quickly picks up that demon hunter as the bears are still chasing that for preservation saves druid of the claw gets mana burn now needs to retreat back still at adept training as the units now head back off to the north keeper of the grove looking to head off to the north here we are looking at more druids of the claw ready to go for that rejuvenation keeping that blue army alive but the blue army of colorful still down a little bit right now as we now see a transition into mountain giants all right mountain giants just what the doctor ordered extremely powerful when going up against the mass well aoe or, or the range not aoe the range units the druids of the talon the archers and the dryads but now that we're transitioning into bears colorful may be able to do that how a legendary crota 10 years yes i have been streaming for 10 years um and i am doing well thank you for asking 74 supply compared to 60 infi with a sizable lead mountain giants with that siege damage as well they're going to be making their way over and well this is actually a strange spot to be in the druids of the talon um are going to get a little bit of a, a bonus effect maybe two two damage per attack but that's not really all that effective now what we're going to be looking at here is that the units should be making their way out well if the druids of the town could actually attack ground units while they're in the air form with their magic damage that would be a very very effective ability um an easy way to mass up damage and perhaps a way to make the druids of the town a little bit more viable now but that's another talk for another time demon hunter oh no no goblin tinker just simply walking on by and perhaps going to be dropping some clock a uh, clockwork goblins here that's actually strange that the goblin tinker was able to make it its way all the way over there without getting stuck or caught up anywhere Judah the clock gonna go ahead and finish those off now as those units are now looking to back up what's happening next all right priests of the moon getting here ready to go dryad's gonna go ahead and get picked 
off some damage onto those druids of the talon uh, as we're seeing a little bit of a pincer play here both sides trying to fight through one low hit point druid of the talon still sticking around uh, however gets taken out by a clockwork goblin explosion cyclone continuing to pick up units here low hit point units slowly getting taken down mountain giants could be in trouble and well are they going to get staffed or preservation you already what what is that no that's a druid of the claw there down to 166 it gets staffed or preservation this will stick and stay alive another day red versus blue continually continuing the fight back and forth goblin tinker doesn't like what he sees decides to head back all right Units will be teleporting back. We are back at 74 supply or 80 supply compared to 69 now. Infi with a sizable advantage, but much of his army is currently in the red. Mountain Giants, not well, not very known to be easily healed. They have 1600 hit points, so that is good. But while well, trying to heal up 1600 hit points can be a daunting task without a fountain of health. Keeper of the Grove City, still sitting at level 1. Nagasi, which now making her way back down here as well. Priestess of the Moon going to go ahead and shift down as we're looking at an engagement here in the coming moments. Demon Hunter going to get lined up. He does have an Ankh of Reincarnation, allowing him to get, get knocked down and get back up again. But then again, you still don't want to be giving that much experience or lose that Demon Hunter for that long. 80 supply compared to 73. Priest of the Moon now making its way out. Druids of the Claw here ready to go. Dryads are going to engage. No, a little bit of a standoff still. Infi. Infi having a little bit of a time trying to decide when to engage as we're looking at the bears now finally lined up. Colorful with those bears, really powerful as they're going to engage back and forth now. As you're going to see, the mountain giants were going to end up taking bonus damage. Low hit point, Druid of the Claw gets stabbed a preservation away as we're going to see another bear get taken out. All right, both sides trying to fight. There's another staff of preservation. So multiple staffs of preservation on Colorful's army perhaps is the saving grace right now. But at some point, these bears are going to start to fall. All right, the cooldown looks like it's going to be coming to an end. Bear is going to get taken down. There it goes. Mountain Giants bears are going to start falling on both sides as the Goblin Tinker, well, low on hit points, doesn't want to stick around far too long. Keeper of the Rove now at level 2 gets up Thorns Aura. Going to be able to reflect back some of that melee damage as the Demon Hunter is in a bit of trouble. Could easily get taken out. Staff of Preservation. There's the Mana Burn. Staff of, well, Staff of Preservation saves another bear. These two low hit point bears need to be able to get away. Are they going to be able to make it back? As you can see, a low hit point drew to the claw. Um, now down to one hit points, trying to head back again. All right, Demon Hunter getting ready to re-engage once more, trying to go after these Dryads. Dryads are microing back again. Naga Sea Witch says, you know what? I don't want to stick around in this fight. Let me get out of here as well. Demon Hunter gets to level 5 in all of that last there. Druids of the Talons now trying to head back. Low hit point, Druids of the Claw. Going to go ahead and retreat back to... Colorful compared to 70. <clears throat> Uh, compared to 70. All right. How is this all going to be unfolding? Demon Hunter needs to make its way back off to the north. Infi has a level 5 Demon Hunter, level 3, almost level, level 4 Goblin Tinker. He's going up against a level 4, almost level 5 uh, Priestess of the Moon, a level 2 Keeper of the Grove, and a Naga Sea Witch. Also, with this time, if Colorful is able to get all of these bears to just start rejuvenating each other, his army is going to be significantly stronger, as I believe there are still a number of low hit point units. No, nope, I take it back. Infi's army looking pretty strong as well. 74 supply compared to 77. Colorful with a slight advantage. 1-1 one, one upgrades going up against... Uh, well, can't tell the upgrades until I can actually click on a bear. Um, let's take a look. Well, units are about to engage here. Druids of the Talon are low. Bears are sitting at 2-1 upgrades. Rejuvenation about to come through. Thorns Aura plus True Shot Aura may be the difference as the Dryads and the Bears try to take down this Tree of Life. All right. Fairy Fire now coming across. Wisp now coming in. Fork Lightning. Priestess of the Moon now sitting at level 5. That level 3 True Shot Aura should be huge in terms of damage. Plus 11 damage just from that. Keeper of the Grove now getting plus 19 with big damage. And also the Druids of the Talon. All right, Tree of Life was lost, but at what cost is Infi going to lose too many of his bears as he tries to engage back constantly? Staff of Preservation on both sides, Infi losing bear after bear, 
and Infi is in serious trouble. Is it going to lose another bear right there? No, that bear able to escape at 16 hit points. Wisp now looking to back away again. This expansion trying to be built. Well, that Priestess of the Moon going to have no problem at all trying to take that down as it moves away. Little bit of damage as it constantly attacks here again and again. Down to 70, down to 17. There is the cancellation as the Priestess of the Moon dealing upwards of 52 damage per shot as the Demon Hunter finally shoes it away. Keeper of the Grove. Now see which... Why is, is there more sounds? All right, sounded like that goblin factory or the pocket factory was still trying to crank out clockwork goblins for a moment. Priestess of the Moon going to get in the position here. Damage onto that Demon Hunter. He's going to back away once more. Looking for that last Wisp. Wisp going to easily get taken down. Nope, there's a detonation. Not enough attacks at all. Coming back, Goblin Sappers from Infi going to make short work of a new expansion attempt and this is actually well worth it if you can get one sapper to take down a building as it's being built there it goes it takes it down and the gold mine was lost not uh, for really uh, effective trades back across on the other side priestess of the moon gonna try and engage here druids of the talon well it does have mana flare they're gonna go straight after this tree of life tree of life is in a lot of distress right now may end up getting taken down is it gonna get repaired in time and no it is not Scroll of Town Portal picks up everyone, gets out of a bad fight, and was able to get the expansion out. All right. One Druid of the Talon, however, lost as a casualty there. 77 supply compared to 74 as Infi gets back up to 80. We may see this Tree of Eternity walk its way over and reestablish a gold mine here. Meanwhile, this gold mine is still mining away. And that is going to be a big gold difference going into this late game segment. The next fight may be able to define everything. We know that, well, Colorful knows that he doesn't necessarily need to fight at this very moment. He's getting his advantage by collecting gold right now. If he buys the right items and is able to push forward, well, perhaps that will be enough as we're going to take a look here. Goblin Tinker sees nothing is going on, drops down a pocket factory instead. Mountain Giants, Bears, Demon Hunter, Dryads, all of these units lined up ready to protect. Tree of Eternity is slowly transitioning over here. You can see all of those Clockwork Goblins. Are we going to see a detonation? What is going on? The Wisp, there it goes, detonates itself to try and deal a bit of damage as the units are now making their way back again. All right. Keeper of the Grove, Priestess of the Moon. Now making its way through. Priestess of the Moon still sitting at level 5. Not going to get to Starfall anytime soon. At this point, if the Priestess of the Moon unlocks Starfall, it will pretty much be GG. The only way he can get experience is by taking down these bears and mountain giants. And if he does enough of that, well then he would come out ahead anyways. Keeper of the Grove going to go ahead and finish off all of the Murloc Huntsmen. A lot of the Druids of the Claw still in Druid form. And this is to maximize how much mana that they have. Dryad going up against multiple... Or, or Priest of the Moon going up against multiple Dryads. They're going to be forced to retreat back here. Tree of Eternity is now going to be making its way over. This tree is about to entangle this gold mine. But there is a good amount of gold lost in the mining process. Alright, Priest of the Moon trying to win this white by all, fight all by herself. Bear is right there. This is not a good spot for that bear. There is just simply too many dryads. The Priest of the Moon, Staff of Preservation, the saves it. And where is it going? Is it Does it go back across here? No, where did it go? Alright, up, up. I, I would have thought it would have Staff of Preservation back to the Tree of Eternity, but I didn't see it. Back down to the south here. Units are going to make their way down. Going after the Moonwell here. Going to go ahead and finally go into the bear form. Ready for the engagement. There is the Fork Lightning. Priestess of the Moon. Or Keeper of the Grove now gets up to level 3. Priestess of the Moon going to go ahead and push on down. Perhaps finish off that Moonwell. And then be able to just slowly win this fight here. As the units are going to be lost. Back down across here. Another bear could get lost down. There is the Goblin Tinker completely surrounded. It is going to get lost. And as those units fall one by one... Infi's chances are falling. Uh, well, Druids of the Talon still in the back line here. We're looking at the Keeper of the Grove entangling and shutting down that Demon Hunter either with Cyclone or Entangle. But the damage is just starting to eat its way through even with Anti-Magic Shell, that unit. 
was unable to stay alive. Demon Hunter was going to fall, and there was the GG. Colorful taking this game from Infi. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it.